Hello everyone, greetings, small arms, big, big hugs. So glad we can be here together today. My name's RJ and today we're going to do one of our beginning music lessons here at the keyboard. You can see I've got my piano here together with you. And the way the piano keys work is that each one of the white keys is one of our whole letters in the musical alphabet. The musical alphabet is the letters A through G. A through G. A, B, C. I left some space in between A and B, C and D, D and E, F and G, but there's no space here between B and C and D and F. What those spaces are is what we call accidentals. So each one of those spaces between the letters has two, two possible names. A sharp, if I move up to it from A, and B flat, if I come down to it from B. There's not a half step, that step to an accidental. Doesn't exist here between B and C, nor does it exist between E and F. We could still flat the note C, have the note C flat, but it would be to this note right here. So C sharp and D flat, then D sharp and E flat, F sharp and G flat. And over here where the alphabet loops around again and again, we have G sharp and A flat. So there's our musical alphabet. And the keyboard works that exact same way. So here's the note A. There's the note A. And so the white keys here, these lower keys, because the keys on the piano weren't always this color configuration with the white on the bottom black keys as the higher elevation keys. And in fact, it's that topographical textural difference that sets the two keys apart, not their color. So we could have these really any mix of colors that we wanted. It's that elevation difference between the two. So this lower key group, what do we have as the white keys? Those are our whole letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then we end up right back where we started from. You can see that this key is in the same place as this one down here in reference to that group of black keys right there. A, B, C, D, E, F, G back to A. We're going to continue going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then A again. And so these keys up here, the black keys, those are where those accidentals were. So A, and then this note between A and B, could be either A sharp or B flat. And notice, so here we are, just like in our alphabet, where B and C were right next to each other. B and C were right next to each other. D and F right next to each other. That's exactly what happens here on our keyboard. So B and C are right next to each other. This note right here could be D flat or C sharp. E flat and D sharp. They're 
using E and F right next to each other. Then F sharp and G flat, G sharp and A flat, A sharp and B flat, just like where we started from over here. So A, A sharp, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D flat. F sharp, G flat, G, G sharp, A flat, and back to A. So here's the way our musical alphabet works at the keyboard. We have what are called major and minor scales, also known as our diatonic scales. Our formula for the major diatonic scale is a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole, a whole, and a half step. So whole steps and half steps, a half step is the shortest distance that we can move in music and here at the keyboard. So one key to the immediate next key. And so that's where this note right here, even though we usually call it the letter B, this note could technically be C flat if we needed it to be. This note could be B sharp, even though we normally look at it as C because it's that half step distance that we're talking about when we sharp or flat a note. Works out that we move to the black keys most of the time, but there are exceptions here at B and C and E and F. So the way we create our different major scales is by starting on a note, starting on a given letter, and then executing this formula right here. So if I started on C, and we went up a whole step, that would take us to D. And if we turn on, went from D up a whole step, that'd take me to E. Now here's an interesting moment. We have a half step. We need to move a half step from E to the next letter. By the way, you move one letter at a time. That's what's determining what letters are happening down here in our diatonic scales. So I have to move up a half step, and it turns out that there's no black key there, so I can just move from E to F without creating an accidental. That's our word accidental, our generic word for sharps, just a hashtag, and flats, which is a lowercase b, like that. Sharp and flat. Sharp if we go up. Flat coming down, like that. So now a whole step from F step from G takes me to A. A whole step from A takes me to B. And a half step from B. That's what I need, a half step. Just like down here at E and F, I don't encounter any accidentals there, so I can move right from B to C for that half step without creating any sharps or flats. So the C major scale, we were able to create that scale based off our formula without creating any sharps or flats. And that's why when you play the C major scale, we don't play any of these keys up here. We can play the C major scale just down here, moving from one letter to the next. 
there's that wonderful sound, solfeggio. You may recognize it as solfege. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And those letters, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back. So what gives a major scale its sound is this formula, that distance from one note to the next. And so if I started on a different note, I could start on any one of these, the sharp or the flat or the whole letters there. I could start on any one of these and then proceed with my major scale formula. And because we kept those distances the same, it would sound relatively the same. It would have that same shape and sound like do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. What would change is the combination of sharps or flats, right? We'd still move one letter at a time, but what would change is those combinations of sharps and flats. And that would also affect our keys here, and which keys that we played. C major happens to just move along these bottom keys, but each different major key is going to represent a different combination of white and black keys that we would play. That's part of what making and learning all 12 possible scales. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve possible major scales that we could create. Part of what makes it so important to learn those musicians and keys players no exception to that is that each one of them represents a different combination of white and black keys part of learning this instrument is getting your hands used to that getting our hands used to being able to traverse all different combinations of white and black keys we'll talk more about what's going on with those different major scales and keys, and the principles behind that some more in our intermediate and our advanced music lesson. This is a beginning music lesson, so we're just talking about that basic major scale formula and how that creates the C major scale. Have you ever played the C major scale? Have you ever played a major scale on any instrument? Do you play any instruments? Be sure to let us know. We love hearing about other musicians, even other people learning. If you're taking lessons on anything, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have any comments or questions about the C major scale or anything we covered today, do feel free to ask try to respond to everyone as quick as we can. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Again, my name's RJ. I stream live on Twitch three days a week with my spouse, Jules. We are RJ and J. That's the YouTube channel you're watching here. That's also our tag over on Twitch and really everywhere around our internet, RJ and J. Hope to see you around again real soon. Hope you enjoyed our music lesson today. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Small arms, big, big hugs, friend.